So the Dow Jones Industrial Average just fell the largest number of points in a single day in its history. And the media is freaking out. If you turn on the TV, you have some water cooler work uh, talk at work, you're speaking with your friends, other investors, people are freaking out. Well, this dividend growth investor, I invest for dividends and cash flow. I welcome this correction. I am very excited about this. And it actually is a really, really good thing for people who are in this for the long term to collect dividends and cash flow. And I want to discuss this market correction today and what it means for my personal passive income stock portfolio. Hey everyone, Ian here from ppcian.com. I am back with another video about dividend growth investing. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited about this video today. And usually I publish two videos per week. This time I'm changing the schedule around this week because there is a current event in our market right now that has the media and certain investors going crazy. I am talking about the market drop yesterday where the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell a huge number of points. It fell 1,175 points in a single day. This is the largest number of points it's ever fell in a single day, not in terms of percentage, but in terms of points. And certainly it has people being more cautious. It has people being more skeptical, more concerned about their investment portfolios. And it may make sense for certain people to be concerned because there are a lot of investors out there that buy to um, buy, buy low and sell high. That's their strategy, buying low and selling high. And if you need to sell high to pay your bills and you are reliant on actually selling positions to use that capital to fund your lifestyle, it may be concerning if there is a, a further correction ahead or a further downturn ahead. But for someone like myself who invests purely for cash flow and passive income, I invest for dividends, a downturn is actually a really good thing because it creates a buying opportunity to get a better starting yield. And my current yield, all of my current dividends, whether the stocks go up or down, it really does not matter. My current yield is going to keep coming in in a good market or a bad market. So I want to discuss this today and how I think about this, how I think about it very differently from most investors out there, certainly most of the people in the media who are trying to discuss this topic and they're trying to really illustrate it as a somewhat of a, a panic, I like to take a step back and I like to look at the big picture here and that's what today's video is about. Before we get into the video today, I wanted to encourage you, I'm going to link to it in my description below, head over to my Instagram. I'm starting to get some really good questions over there. I'm answering them. And so if you want another way of connecting with me, certainly YouTube comments are great. I really appreciate those and I try to respond to all of them. But certainly Instagram is another alternative as well. And I'm very active on Instagram right now. You can find it in the description below. So I want to start out just with a little bit of perspective. Let's look at the last 12 months. Last 12 months, one year ago, the Dow Jones Industrial Average started at 20,052 points. It reached its peak recently of 26,616. And then all of a sudden it had a few bad days and then it, had a, it absolutely tanked in that one day yesterday. And so it came down to 24,527. While this may be a little bit scary for some investors, we're actually doing really well here. The market is still up over the last 12 months, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 22%. So I just don't understand why are people freaking out out there? Is it to sell more articles, newspapers, magazines, get people watching them on the online? Is it to create um, some sense of urgency around financial planning. I don't know what what it is, why people are, are getting so freaked out about this, why it is getting hyped up so much. But the fact of the matter is, is we're still up in 22% in one year for the average to do that well. That is phenomenal. That is historical. I wouldn't be surprised here. Well, market's up today, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a further downturn. And and there's a lot of room for a downturn here because we're at a historical high in the market. And so anyways, 
I just wanted to start with some perspective because I think sometimes when we're looking at stocks, we're looking at the short term. And I look, I've fallen into this trap before, especially in my earlier days. I've been investing now for over 20 years. I have over 30 stocks in my dividend portfolio. And in my earlier years, way earlier years, sure, I'd get caught up in the day-to-day. -day, so I understand. And I'm not trying to, especially investors, I'm not trying to blame them. I think the media sometimes does fuel a little bit of this. And certainly they need to get people watching their shows as well. And so I understand what's going on here. But at the same time, this perspective, I think, is often ignored. And that's why I put downturn here in quotations. This is not really a stock market downturn, in my opinion, yet. Maybe it will be in the future, but right now it's just a minor correction. And so I want to start today actually with some math. This is why I love dividend investing. Let's look at two cases, case one and case two. When the stock market goes down, it is very advantageous for people investing for dividends like myself. Companies that pay dividends in the United States typically pay them four times per year, once per quarter. These are checks that one receives that one can use to pay the bills. One doesn't have to sell any shares. One doesn't have to buy low and sell high. Even if one is down, let's say one buys, buys really high and then the stock goes down one is still gonna get their dividends and can wait for the stock to recover in the future. That's why I love dividends. They are predictable. They will come in whether the stock is up or down. It just doesn't matter. And I don't have to time the market. I don't have to worry about the market timing. But anyways, let's look at two cases. In the first case, let's say the stock market is at all time highs like it is now. Let's say the stock cost $100. Let's say it pays $3 per year in dividends. The dividend yield can be calculated by dividing the dividends by the share price. So three divided by 100, that equals 3%. The current yield on that stock is 3% and that may go up over time as the company raises its dividend in the future, but that's the starting yield. Let's look at case number two. Case number two, let's assume, don't look at this chart for now, let's actually assume that it tanks. Let's just say the market tanks. Let's say the Dow Jones Industrial Average goes down to like 10,000. I mean, it, it, that probably would not happen, but let's say there's a major, major, major correction um, coming forth. And um, let's say that same stock, now it's $50, it lost half of its value. Dividend is still three. Like I said, the dividend isn't gonna change as long as the business fundamentals are strong, as long as the company is making enough money to cover the dividend, they're gonna pay that same dividend. Three divided by 50 is now a 6% starting yield. Which one would you rather have? Would you rather have a 3% starting yield or a 6% starting yield? I know I fall into bucket number two, case number two. I like it when the market is going down because I can get more yield on my money. And that's what it's all about. The, the more yield I can get, the faster I can build my dividends, the faster I achieve financial freedom. So if I have to endure a little bit of pain with the stock market going down, maybe my ego gets crushed a little bit. I see my portfolio value get cut in half. Yes, that's not gonna be fun, but at the end of the day, it will get me to financial freedom quicker because I'm averaging in each month. I buy stocks every month and I reinvest my dividends. And so as I reinvest dividends, I buy more shares of stock and I get my stock at progressively lower prices. My yield is getting better and better and better. I'm getting more for my money. Another way of looking at this is one can buy their, let's say we're talking about clothes. One can go to a really fancy store, buy their clothes for full retail value, or they can take the same dollars, they can go to the outlet, get the exact same clothes and get like 10 items for the price of one. Same concept here. When the market goes down, dividend investors who are shopping actively for stocks for value, they get more for them, their money. They're getting more value. And I love getting value. I love a good sale. I love some good, um, good yield and some progressively better yields. Now, one thing I do want to point out with, with all of this is I have found it for myself very difficult to time the market. I personally believe that there's probably some further downside ahead. The market may go up before the downside returns, but at some point we're gonna have a correction here. We're gonna have a real correction, not a fake downturn. We're not gonna go for up 22% in a year and call it a downturn. We're actually gonna have negative years. We're gonna have years where the stock market is down and we may have several of them in a row. And when you compound those down years, 
The stock market may be down as much as 20, 30, or 40 percent at a time. I don't know how big it will get, but this could theoretically happen. And so, but I just don't know what's going to happen. And what I've always found in my own investing is really helpful for dividends is to dollar cost average. And this really means buying incremental amounts of stock every month on a monthly basis. And I'm always reinvesting my dividends as well, meaning when a company pays the dividends, I typically invest it right back in to the same company. Certain times I'll pool them and I'll invest them into um, select stocks that I think are, are the best values at the time. So I do a little bit of both. But basically I reinvest the dividends. And this is refreshing because when the market is going down, let's say you don't have any capital. Maybe it's a tough month. You don't have net new capital to invest. If you're a dividend investor, and you don't need your capital now, you don't need your cash flow now to pay for living expenses, you're going to tap into that later, like myself, at least you could rest assured that, hey, you're generating dividends and those could be used to reinvest, to purchase shares at progressively lower prices. So I love that about dividend growth investing. And this is why dividend growth investing is so fundamentally different from other forms of investing especially this mantra of buy low, sell high in the stock market. It's why it's so different and it's so contrarian and why I like it so much. So I actually got my notebook as I always do. I want to um, see if I missed anything here. We've already talked about quite a bit, but here's, here's the deal. If you are newer to dividend investing, you are newer to investing in general, I would typically avoid the media. I would avoid watching the media too much and especially media that is not encouraging. Certainly if there are YouTube channels or sources online that are positive and encouraging, those are great. But if there are certain sources of information that are negative, they're gonna get you down, they're going to sway you from your strategy. I have found, now I've been doing this so long, it just doesn't phase me. But at certain points in my earlier career, especially when I was first getting started, I remember these stories, they would sometimes push me in the wrong direction. Basically, what I like to do is just completely avoid the media. Same goes for water cooler talk. If you're at work, you're at the water cooler, you're in the lunchroom, you're talking to friends about, um, colleagues about investing, maybe you're talking to family about investing, maybe um, outside of work you're talking to your friends about investing. Unless your group of friends are very supportive and like-minded, they're very much focused on dividends, which they probably are not because everyone I seem to talk to, especially here in the Silicon Valley, they, they only buy the tech stocks and they're looking for massive capital appreciation. They're not very focused all the time on dividends. I try to stay away from those conversations because oftentimes they can cast doubt and they can cast negativity towards one's dividend strategy just because, again, dividend strategy is so different from what people are used to seeing. It is so foreign to them that oftentimes one may critique it or one may just speak negatively, not only about dividends, but about the, about the market in general. And what I would say with anything in life, especially investing, is keeping that positive attitude is really important because it requires persistence. It requires dedication, decades in the market to achieve a massive amount of passive income. So I think that's really important in times like these to avoid the water cooler talk. Unless you're on a, a group of like-minded people, like here on PPCE, and I think in the comments section, everyone is here to support each other in their dividend investing. So those are the types of avenues I would personally go towards in these types of markets. What else? I like this one. This is really important. A very extreme way of looking at, at dividend investing, but I think it could be helpful in this kind of situation where the market's starting to go down. When I buy a dividend stock, I actually assume 100% loss of my capital. I literally assume, since I, I never plan on selling the stock, and, and don't get me wrong, I've made huge capital appreciation. In fact, I oftentimes beat the S&P 500 with my capital appreciation. I've done some videos on this in the past. I've done very well. But because I am investing for cash flow, because I am investing, my goal is to pay the bills. I cannot pay the bills with capital appreciation, especially in a down market, because if I buy up here, market starts trending down, eventually it'll go back up. But before it does, I don't want to have to sell at lower prices to pay the bills. It doesn't make any sense. But if I buy here, and I use my dividends to pay the bills, that works just fine because I'm not tapping into the capital. But basically, when I buy a stock, I just assume the capital's gone. I don't, I'm not gonna look at the capital. Sure, I track it 
not as closely those dividends. What I do, however, is immediately when I buy a stock, I track the stream of dividend income. I track how it's going up over time. I watch the fundamentals of the company to make sure the company can keep raising the dividend, but that's what I track. And by focusing on the goal, the passive income, it is so empowering. It is so cool because despite the aggregate value of my portfolio, it just doesn't matter what the aggregate value of my portfolio is because I don't need it. I'm not gonna sell it. I don't wanna sell my stock to pay bills because if I do that, I'm losing my dividend stream. And so basically, maybe this would work for you, maybe it won't, it has surely worked for me. When I buy stock, I just assume 100% loss of capital. So it doesn't matter where the market is, all I track are my dividend stream. And like I said, my dividend stream is up and to the right. Doesn't matter whether it's a good market or bad market. Usually the stock market is going to more or less reflect the economy. Let's say the stock market does go down 50%. At that point, it is probably a reflection of something weird going on in the economy. If that is the case, it is very important to look at the fundamentals because like I said, the dividends will keep going up and to the right, for, especially for the world-class companies I like to purchase. I'm buying this year, by the way, Kimberly Clark, Procter & Gamble. Those are the two stocks I'm really focused on now. I'll link below, I've done a video on that. I doubt that Kimberly Clark and Procter & Gamble would cut their dividend or even flatline it. They will keep growing it as long as the fundamentals are reasonably strong. And so the fact of the matter though is if the market's down 50%, it's time to start looking at these companies and looking at the fundamentals, like are the fundamentals strong? Because if, if the market takes that much of a hit, maybe there is something weird going on in the macro economy that could affect the stream of dividends. And so it's important to look at that, to be careful, Maybe there are years where the dividends don't increase as much. Maybe there's years where they're somewhat flat. That being said, when I buy world-class companies, my dividend stocks, this is why I do so much analysis. I do the analysis to make sure that in a bad market, they can survive. In a bad market, they can grow dividends even. And these are the types of companies I like to buy who have been through it before. They're not just a new company. They've been paying dividends for decades. They've been through horrible markets and they were through the last market crash and they raised dividends during the whole thing. Those are the kind of companies I really like. And so that's just a really nuanced point though to, to focus on here that let's assume capital appreciation when, when I buy capital is gone, whatever, I don't look at it. If I'm laser focused on dividends, the most important thing is to always analyze and just make sure that the fundamentals are still there to keep increasing the dividends, which so far in my experience over the last 20 plus years, they have been. And so that's been a really, really good experience. So before I leave today, just in terms of full disclosure, I own the two of the stocks I mentioned today, Procter & Gamble, Kimberly Clark, PG, KMB. I'm long on those, I have them in my portfolio. Also a disclaimer, today's video is not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. This video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you are gonna go out and buy stocks in the stock market, please do consult a licensed financial advisor first. If you've made it with me this long, I really appreciate it. I thank you for hanging in there. And I thank you for your support here on YouTube. If you enjoyed the video, you want to say, hey Ian, thank you for everything you're doing. Please give me a thumbs up, a comment, subscribe to my channel. All of that means the world to me. It's the greatest way you can thank me. And my channel is growing pretty quickly now. We just, we just surpassed uh, 2,500 subscribers. So I'm on my way to, to building a bigger channel. And I would say this is also a reflection of the community. We're all on our way here to having the best community online for dividend growth investing, for passive income investing. And let's just keep supporting each other in our goals to drive passive income streams so we can earn money in our sleep despite where the stock market is. Who cares where the stock market is as long as those dividend checks keep rolling in. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next dividend investing video.